Hi everybody, welcome to the third principle of SOLID, which is no other than the Lisko substitution principle. What the definition here says is that a derived class must be substitutable for its base class without affecting the correctness of a program. That means that objects of a derived class or of a subclass uh, should be able to replace the object of the base class or their superclass without altering the expected behavior or outcomes. So what this really means, uh, as always, we will have um, our code here on the left. It, we will have our starter code. Um, and on the right, we will make some changes to that code so that uh, we adhere to uh, the LSP principle, the least of substitution principle. Um, just uh, a side note, um, something I haven't said before is that uh, by following the solid principles, and also if you followed from my previous video all the way to the end, you will come to uh, see how much um, solid embraces interfaces. So by watching this video series, uh, I believe that you will gain a very good understanding over interfaces and not just uh, seeing solid itself, but it will also help you a lot on interfaces if you don't understand it very well. So um, without further ado, let's start and let's uh, look again now at the code and the definition. The definition says that a derived class must be substitutable to the base class without affecting the correctness of the program. So what is the base class here? The base class here is uh, the, the bird that is open for extension. Okay, In Kotlin, when we uh, mark a class as open, it means that we can extend from this class, we can inherit from this class. So what this class uh, has, it's open for extension. So we can make uh, uh, bird subclasses, like we have, for example, eagle that inherits from bird. And we can also uh, extend these two. So uh, these functions uh, can be overridden. OK, uh, so uh, we can provide our own implementation about uh, walking and flying when it comes to a bird. So the subclass uh, or the derived class, which is this, okay, uh, must be substitutable for a bird. So when we uh, ask for a bird, we can pass an eagle, but without affecting the correctness of the program. So let's see how this um, principle is violated here. Okay, so as we can see, an eagle inherits from a bird and it does can fly, but it can fly in some other way than, um, let's say, any bird does. H about walking, it doesn't do anything. It uses the um, super classes, the base classes implementation. OK, when it comes to a duck, well, a duck can both walk and fly, but in a different manner than uh, we use on the base class. So uh, in the base class for walking, we just say walking, but here we say that the uh, duck is walking slow, for example. Okay? It's a different implementation. And also a duck is flying low. It doesn't just fly as high as other birds. Okay. The problem is, however, on the third class here, on penguin. Now, penguin has it, its own implementation when it comes to walking. Okay. We say, it, uh, sorry, duck. We should say here penguin. OK, so penguin is walking funny. Uh, but when it comes to flying, uh, we come to see that penguins cannot fly. So we throw an exception. It's not supported. But our code allows us to call the fly, but we will throw an exception. So that's the kind of violation that we have here. And if you see. Up here, we have a make fly function, OK, that takes a bird and calls its fly function. So by calling uh, make bird fly for eagle, we should get this result flying super high. For duck, we will get flying low. And for a penguin, we will crash our program. So let's run this, see it in action. And yes, that's how it is. Flying super high for the case of eagle, 
flying low for the case of DAC, and boom, penguins can't fly exception with a crash when it comes to um, penguins, because penguins cannot fly. So from that, let's come to see how we can fix that. And yes, of course, the fix is through interfaces. Now, how can we approach this problem using interfaces? Now, we will um, create an interface here, OK? And we will call it um, flyable, OK? Now, flyable can have this uh, fly uh, definition, or it can even have uh, a complete uh, default implementation, OK? same as abstract classes. We will revisit also abstract classes for the same thing, but you will see why generally it's better to stick to interfaces. But I will also show you an abstract classes uh, approach to the same problem. We will modify it for abstract classes later on. So by doing that here, okay, we can remove uh, the fly from the birds, okay? So we just say that flyables fly, but not birds. Now, when it comes to eagle, eagle has a problem. It tried to override uh, a function call to a superclass that doesn't uh, have the definition of the override that we try to do. So what we can do? So eagle inherits from the birds, but implements the flyable interface. So it now overrides the default functionality defined here. Or if there was no functionality at all, it uh, defines its own, OK? Now, the DAC. Likewise, for the DAC, it should also implement the flyable interface. And now the DAC can fly low. But when it comes to the penguin, what happens? Well, instead of uh, producing an, uh, a crash for the penguins, we simply don't implement the flyable interface, interface for penguins because penguins just don't fly. So we can avoid this crash altogether. And here, when we want to make a bird fly, we don't make a bird fly, but we make a flyable fly. So we don't say for all birds that should fly, but, but only those with the ability to fly. So what do interfaces introduce here? Abilities. OK, so uh, let's put a flyable here. OK, and instead of bird fly, we say flyable fly. And directly, you see here the difference. Here, for those first two, we have no problem. But in the case of the penguin, instead of allowing our code to run and crash, we forbid it directly. This will not build. OK, so. That way, we don't provide implementation to something that should not be implemented. OK, now this is the solution uh, using um, uh, using interfaces. Approaching now the same problem using abstract classes, we will change the flyable from an interface that has a default implementation to an abstract class with an implementation. So we could make this an abstract class, and it should define a default implementation for fly. And in order to be able to override, this should be also open. OK? Now, the flyables, in order not to come to the same problem as we had before, it should be flyable birds. So our flyable now should inherit from bird. Now you have already seen the first problem here. The first problem is that in order to adhere to the same approach, uh, what would happen if we had an airplane, which is not a bird? In the case of an interface, both birds and airplanes could implement the flyable interface, but now uh, the uh, flyable ability, let's say, is applied only to birds like that. Now, the eagle, instead of inheriting from the bird, OK, because we know that we can inherit from a single class and implement multiple interfaces. Now, flyable is not an interface. Um, they would inherit from the flyable, OK, 
which is a flyable bird, okay? Same for the duck. The duck would inherit from a flyable bird, while the penguin would simply remain as a bird which doesn't necessarily fly, because only flyables, which are birds, have this ability. Now, if you see, we have again the same thing. So, we have the same solution. But the downside here is that with this approach, now flyable is forced to be of a bird. And if we introduce something else, like an airplane, we would have a problem, we would need to repeat code. So generally, it's a much better idea to usually uh, use um, interfaces and stick to abstract class only where you really need to use abstract class. Okay, so uh, that's uh, how it is about the abstract class approach. And now we will move to the second code, sn code snippet, uh, which is um, the how moment I was telling you about. So with our code snippet, here, if you look at this, you will see the list of substitution principle in action. Here we have a mutable list. Okay, so my list is of type mutable list. But there is no uh, actual uh, implementation of a mutable list. An array list implements a mutable list. So actually, this is what I'm saying here when we were talking about passing birds here. Okay. Now, an array list is a mutable list, but also a linked list is a mutable list. Now, when I call my list here, as you see, it proposes me, gives me whatever is available for the mutable list, not for the array list, okay? So the array list is the implementation of that, okay? Now, you will also come to see that uh, when we print the list items, we print using a list because a mutable list is a list at the very end. But as a mutable list, Mutable list two does have the add function made available. The list, simple list, the immutable version of that does not have the add function. And that is a list of substitution in action. Okay. The derived class uh, doesn't uh, have a problem here because if we had an add class, in the immutable list, just to crash our pro program or just to do nothing, have an empty implementation, this wouldn't be a very good solution. So what we have, we keep the minimum uh, on the base class and we keep extending on the subclasses. And that way, uh, we um, adhere to the list of substitution principle. I hope this was insightful for you. And uh, I hope that uh, you understood it and I'm awaiting your comments. Thank you very much. Let's go to the next one.